So, you talked about FedEx a little bit earlier. Um, what are your thoughts on the strategy of buying a stock after a large drop, just like FedEx today? Yeah, okay. So, again, we have some visuals on this. So, Federal Express, uh, last night, announced their earnings. And they missed their earnings. They gave kind of a warning about what they're seeing on a global basis. They decided to not provide guidance going forward, which that was actually what everybody was doing in 2020 because nobody mm -hmm. could figure out what was going on. Uh, and so they're doing that, and that was seen as somewhat of a negative. And so we have, you know, a chart of Federal Express here, uh, just, you know, year to date, and look at that straight down line 23 percent drop yeah. you know at least as of the time we did this slide um and so the question is should you buy that right hey it's down good company you yeah know? i mean everybody knows Federal express they're probably not going away uh should i be buying here so i have two hats one hat is the advisor hat and as an advisor and a money manager I can't go in and buy Federal Express because, first of all, kind of the minimum position we'd ever buy is about $5 million. Uh, oftentimes, it's more than that. And so that's a huge risk, you know, to mm -hmm. the practice and to the clients as a whole to kind of come in and bottom fish on this. It is a little bit scary to me to own any one position that could drop 23%. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we use these very widely diversified, you know, ETFs like the S&P 500 and the total stock market index. But my other hat is kind of a personal investor. Uh, and so I do. I buy these types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, there, and there's a couple of reasons for that. And I buy them in very small quantities. And then I'll kind of accumulate if I like them. Um, and so here's an example of one that, you know, you bought some of this too. Uh, yeah. And so this is Target. So Target, that was a 25% drop. Uh, eventually became an even bigger drop. You can see... That they continue down and so a couple things i would say is number one keep it small yeah mm -hmm. and uh especially right now uh when you look when you go, let's go back and look at federal express so if you look at where it is right now um, it's probably going lower right mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't keep me from buying you know a small position right now um but i'd want to accumulate like it did with target see that it, it finally hit a low uh later uh that's super common and that little bounce right there, they call that a dead cat bounce that happened, you know, after that bottom, and then it came down. So I, I'd accumulate all the way through there until it started to come back up, and now I'm just letting it sit and, and letting it grow. Yeah, and especially with these kind of bottom fishing strategies, your time horizon is a little bit longer. Yes. You're not going to say, I'm looking to make a profit in six months. You're, like, right. you're saying maybe three to five years, this is going to be a good buying opportunity for that stock to appreciate exactly. that. Exactly. And I have clients that have great out long-term outlooks, uh, and they might hang in there with me. Uh, but this is more something if somebody called us, and we do get these calls. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, can you take a little bit of my IRA and go buy Fed Express or go buy Target? And we do. Right? And so that, that's, that's not a problem. In terms of as an advisor recommending and moving it into my models, that's a whole different ballgame. I don't play that game here. Uh, but as the question is a good question is what to do. Now, there is another aspect to this. You really have to kind of believe in the company, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I happen to really think Target is well run, did really well. Most of this drop came, I think, for somewhat temporary issue of having too much inventory, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because the market, the, you know, the overall consumer market went from, hey, I'm going to buy everything under the sun and buy TVs and all this. And, you know, Target has a bunch of orders in on those because they're running out of them constantly to, oh my gosh, inflation's really high, I gotta buy milk instead. And so they saw a huge shift in the consumer behavior within their stores, and they had to discount some of this, you know, bigger items that they mm -hmm. had sitting in inventory. So they kind of got caught in that shift. Well, I just feel like they're gonna figure that out and kind of get that going. And, and I don't know that they're, they're, they're not a terrible place in terms of a high inflationary environment. People are gonna look maybe for more bargains at a place like Target, right? So. I like the aspect of it. And so Federal Express, if I go back again to that chart, that's another great company, good name recognition. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, they're exposed to the global economy. And actually, they're a bellwether for the global economy, which concerns me that they're dropping. <laughs> because if they're dropping, that's a pretty interesting sign for things moving less around the world uh, and not just here in the U.S. So... Um, do I think that they're going to survive that? Yes. 
Uh, do I think the global economy is going to V recovery from here and go straight back up? No, mm -hmm. not with what's going on in Europe, especially. Uh, and so you have to have some patience here, but it's not a bad buy accumulate. Here's, here's another example, though, where I would be cautious. So this is Meta stock. And so you can see this was earlier in the year. It had its big drop, and that was about a 40% drop. Mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a bottom fishing technique here for Meta stock, you wouldn't have done too well yet. Maybe that three to five year period still works out. But Meta stock is going through a metamorphosis <laughs> from, you know, Facebook to this, you know, uh, uh, you know meta, metaverse concept. And uh, if, if it works and, you know, the visionary uh, scenario plays out, it, you'll be very happy you own that stock. If it doesn't work, it could go a lot lower. You know, because basically their whole business model is starting to deteriorate uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, so that's not something I would play with just because I don't, I have to have enough conviction. Matter of fact, my wife and I, and here's something I'll give you. It as a, when we buy a stock, we have to feel like if it drops more, we want more. Mm -hmm. We have to have conviction. Uh, and uh, because, you know, we'll continue to accumulate because we have that three, five, ten year outlook. Uh, and so you have to have conviction. I don't have conviction in this, uh, so I haven't purchased it because I'm worried about uh, it's too fuzzy to me as to where they're going. I have conviction in Target, and so we bought that. So, you know, anyway, that's that's another aspect of buying on these dips mm -hmm. is you've got. Now, there's traders that aren't looking for three to five years. They're looking for three to five tick marks on the yeah, minutes. You know, yeah, minutes or days or and so there are some plays you can play here. For example, that dead cat bounce play, uh, you know, that, that there's target, right? So that they might just play that bounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, we're out. You know, I made my 5%. I'm going to go find another one. Yep. I don't do that, but I appreciate it. I understand, you know, in my fact, it's out there a lot. Uh, and so we just have a different outlook, kind of that more of a buy and hold outlook as much as possible, trying to nibble when things are down. Uh, we can we, we can pull up charts all day of different things with semiconductors and all kinds of areas uh, that we don't currently own in the portfolios because they're they're mm -hmm. kind of coming down so much. But on a personal basis, I have no problem with accumulating uh, pieces of those because I, I do think there's some opportunities here. Yeah, and people have had some great home runs. You know, yeah. we we had a client that bought Apple when it was at the you know just going through that bankruptcy, and yeah. you know those home runs can really change a retirement. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, we have some great stories of people that put even small dollar amounts into things at the right times that have turned into huge dollar amounts. I mean, unbelievable numbers. There's some that don't work, right? Yeah. But it is kind of, that's kind of the fun part. And it is always, I always say this too, keep it small because if you're right, it'll work. You'll be fine. Uh, you don't need to make huge bets. If it works, that'd be great. But mm -hmm. if it doesn't, all of a sudden that starts affecting you. Uh, so keep it small and make your small bets. And if it works, you'll be happy. Uh, yeah, because you know you're not always right. And if a bet goes wrong, you don't you don't want it impacting your outlook. Yeah, yeah. I'll start off with a one percent or half percent of my portfolio, very small amounts, you know. And then if it works, I start to add more to it, you know. But if it doesn't, I don't have a lot of exposure. It's just a strategy that I like to use. If if I feel like I can be quite brave with very small amounts, you know, uh, personally. So, yeah, it's a really, it's a good question. It's really interesting.